All right, turn your Bibles with me again to Philippians, or sorry, Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, I had another sermon, as you know, um, but God, uh, God changed the message. I like when he changes the message. Amen. So if you're taking notes, I'd like a copy of them because I have no points. I'm just going to fly by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And uh, my sermon title is Grow Up, Will Ya? Grow up, will you? Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to read two verses. It says, verse 14 and verse 15, hence, uh, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Verse 15, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him, that's Jesus, that's God, in all things, which is the head, even Christ. I uh, like verse two, look down to verse 20. It says, but ye have no, not so learned Christ. Uh, I put, uh, uh, so in verse 14, I, I've made some notes in this text here. Um, verse one, it's uh, chapter, Ephesians chapter four, I think is, is, is a chapter that teaches us that we need to grow up. It gives us, it's, I, I like to call this the grow up chapter. Verse 1, it starts off, it says, Therefore, and you, we're going to probably re, uh, keep your Bible open to Ephesians chapter 4, but it says, I therefore, uh, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, with all lowliness meekness, and meekness and long suffering, forbearing one another, endeavoring to keep the un, uh, one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Folks, there are a lot of Christians who've been saved for 20, 30, 40, 50 years that are still not grown up. And they have, when, when, when a brand new Christian gets saved, they look at the Christian that's been saved for a long time. And again, the, the um, uh, principle number seven was... Um, was our sins will affect those that are following us. In other words, what we do, um, what we do will affect those that uh, are younger Christians. Oftentimes, we we don't we realize that we don't uh, um, when we oh uh, our our sinful habits hurt those who follow us. Um, when when we're uh, when we're not growing in the Lord and when we're not uh, living right for God, we 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 hurt those that are following us. And verse one tells us, gives us a great warning. It says, "I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called." What are you called? This morning, I said I gave a message on who defines you. But what are you called? What do you say? Well, I'm a what? I am a C, I am a C-H, I am a C-H-R-S-T-I-N. I'm a Christian. Yay, God bless you. You're a Christian. But do you live and do you walk and are you grown up like a Christian? Do you remember the song that we sing? The things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. The places I used to go, I don't go there anymore. And my dear friends, I, I was going to preach uh, about being calloused. And sometimes each and every one of us, as we walk in the Lord, we get callous towards some things. But growing up is getting rid of that. And my dear friends, I'll tell you something. Uh, I, in verse 14, I, again, I circled the words that we henceforth no more, uh, be no more children. And I put, the sermon, I put my sermon title up there, Grow Up, Will Ya? Grow Up, Will You? You know, we, well, there are so many Christians sucking their baby thought, their, their spiritual baby thumb and, and, and wetting their baby, uh, their spiritual baby pants and, 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 and they, 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 they're not walking yet. And by the way, or, or there's some Christians who want to run before they can walk. I like that verse that says, the verse one, it starts off with walk worthy. You got to walk before you can run. You got to crawl before you can go or before you can walk. My dear friends, the Bible says in 2 Peter or 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 2, desire as newborn babes in Christ desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may what? Grow thereby. In other words, we got to grow up. Amen. My dear friends, we grow up by several ways. Number 1, <laughs> Getting and staying in God's Word. 
We got to get into God's word. My dear friends, again, in verse 15, it says, Speak the truth in love may grow up. I circled the word may grow up into him in all things. The second thing we got to do is we got to uh, speak the truth. If we read the Bible, we ought to speak the Bible. You know, oftentimes, those that are not spiritual do not want to hear spiritual things. Amen? Let's say, Freddie, uh, the Bible says that thou shalt wear a tie. I'm not wearing one tonight because of our, our, our you program, but thou shalt wear a tie. And, and it's in the Bible, and I'm preaching, I say, Brother Freddie, you know what? You got to wear a tie. I know you hate it. I know you think it's of the devil, but Bible says it's of God. You got to wear a tie. He has a choice. Now, I'm saying this because Freddie doesn't wear ties. I think I've seen him wear a tie three times, uh, four times, uh, three time, twice for funerals and twice here, um, and that's it. Uh, um, uh, you're, did you wear one for your dad's funeral? Yeah, uh, and, 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 and the funeral and for Lou's. That's it. I think that's the only two funerals I've ever seen you wear a tie for. And he looks odd in a tie, okay? Amen. I, amen, Freddie. Uh, but but it, Freddie has a choice. He can either say, okay, I, I'm going to accept the Bible says that i got to wear a tie, or no. And when we don't obey, first one was, uh, what? number one was what? Get in God's word. Number two, speak God's word. Number three, obey God's word. If we don't obey God's word and we speak God's word, we are a Pharisee. We are a hypocrite. And we're not going to grow. My dear friends, there are people that are looking up to you to make sure you are walking the walk that you're talking the talk. You know, the Bible says we're compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses. Well, there's a lot of people looking at us. There's a lot of people watching us. There's a lot of people trying to figure out if you are who you are, who you say you are. Now, you're, are you going to be perfect? No. But you know what? You ought to grow up. And in areas, I think every one of us has at least one area in our lives, myself included, that we need to grow up in. Now, the Bible says that we put away childish things. Now, that's not talking, uh, you know, I was talking to somebody recently, well, I don't think adults should play video games. I don't think they should. Now, now I say fooey on that. I, I do. I, you know, uh, I, when, I first, when I first got into the ministry, I asked a preacher friend of mine who's been pastor for a long time. I said, w what's your secret about keeping sane in the ministry? He said, I, I, play, I play a video game. Uh, I, he said, I do. I play video games. I'm like, oh, okay. He said, I just go and relax. I lose myself just for a few moments. Now, I'm not saying, you know, uh, sit there for 12 hours and play video games, but I, I'm, I'm saying, you know, sometimes you just need to lose yourself. But the childish things is the little sins, the little silly things, the, 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 the brain farts in public, the brain farts in private spiritually. Number four, we need to learn about Christ. Verse 20, it says, but ye have not, but ye have not so learned Christ. Verse 21, it says, If so be that ye heard him and ha have been taught by him as truth is in Jesus Christ. We need to learn about God. You know, there's a difference between reading and learning. That means study to shoe, thy, uh, study to shoe thyself approved. That means you've got to learn what God's word says. See, you know, if you, how do you spot a fake? How do you spot a phony? You know, if if in in the bill in the bank, the ten dollar bills, you know what they you know what they ha, you know how they teach the the new tellers how to spot a phony. They learn about the truth, they learn about the right one. They learn how 
how far the head is over, and they learn all the little things, and they learn all the little tricks of holding up the watermarks. They learn about what is truth. And if we don't learn about what is truth and grow up, we will get caught in the false. You know, wonder why there's so many Baptists in the in the Pentecostal religion, or in the Jehovah well, not the Pentecostal, but the Jehovah Witness religion. Do you know why so many former Baptists are in the Jehovah Witnesses now? It's because they never learned about the truth, and the Jehovah Witnesses were the ones that came and said, "Hey, we love you." Do you know how to spot a phony? Uh, 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 Freddie, do you know how to spot a phony, a, a phony air freshener at your work? Probably do, because why? You study the good one. You study what is good. And, and those people that look at the line, they're at the end going, oh, that's bad, oh, that's bad. And, you know, uh, uh, you ever seen I Love Lucy? How many of you have ever seen I Love Lucy? I love that show. You ever seen them when they're at the chart? Lucy and, uh, what's her, Who? The other lady's name, um, who? What's her name? Anybody? Yeah. Ethel, Ethel. Lucy and Ethel, they're at the chocolate factory, and they're working in the chocolate factory. Have you seen this one? And they're at the end, and, and they're, 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 their, their job is to take the, the bad chocolates off the conveyor belt. And they took it off, and they put it in it, the, and then they were, it was going by so fast. And they're just, and they got chocolate all over their face. But they, they, they spotted the phonies. And we spot the phonies by looking, by learning about the truth. Remember, the Bible says, thy word is truth. And, you know, those that are following behind us, if, if we are not walking the talk and w- walking the walk and talking the talk by the way of truth, guess what? We will hurt them. Verse 21, it says, if, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus Christ. Number, number whatever the next is, number five is you need to be in church to grow up. You know, one of the greatest things, one, honestly, honestly, one of the greatest things I had heard today was Brother Freddie saying, Pastor, I need a church in Katarat, New Jersey. Is that supposed to say pronounce it? Huh? Katarat. New Jersey. I need a church. I, Pastor, I need a church there. I need to go to a church on Resurrection Sunday. Now, he could blow it off, but he wants to be there. But he doesn't only want to be there for himself. He wants to be there for his unsaved family that, 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 that need to hear the truth instead of, he could have gone to the Catholic church with them. But he says, no, I want to go to a good church. I want to hear the truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Set you free or make you free. Isn't that great? When you hear the truth, and you get under God's teaching, the right kind of teaching, it'll help you to grow up. Those little sins that you used to do, you won't do them anymore. My dear friends, the next thing you'll do is found in verse 22 is you'll put off. I want you to circle the words that ye put off. You'll put off the old man. In other words, you'll put it away. Those things that you used to do, you won't do them anymore. And you know what? We are all guilty of not putting up, putting off. The old man. We put it back on. And is that so sad? Isn't it? Isn't it so sad that we 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 used to we get hot headed over certain things? How many people get upset sometimes? Raise your hand. If you don't put up your hand, you're a liar, liar, pants on fire. But you do. And guess what? God says, you shouldn't have done that. You just need to put off. Put off concerning the former conversation. 
That means your tongue. The, the, the words that you used to say before you got saved, and every one of us are guilty of it. I am as guilty of it as you are. We're all guilty about the conversation, the things. How many people, how many people have gossiped, uh, gossiped about somebody? Raise your hand. Since they got saved, raise your hand. Did you hear about Freddie? <gasps> Freddie, he eats balloon. Amen. God bless him. Amen. Um, well, or we make the excuse, well, it's not gossip. I'm warning people. It's not gossip. It's the truth. No, gossip is, is talking about somebody behind their back. Freddie, hey, Freddie's in this room. Did you hear about Freddie? He eats balloon and he's a nice guy. Is he a nice guy because he gets me balloon? Amen. He's. He's my fixer-upper. He's my, he's my balut dealer, amen? <laughs> but my dear friends, we ought to put off the former conversation. You know, again, those that, you, you, know, you know, those that are not, uh, those, I like that, the, the, the principle number six, those that, who do not uh, love the Lord will not help us serve the Lord. And my dear friends, sm- verse, uh, principle number five, small compromises lead to big, uh, big di- great disasters. And we can't, principle number four, we can't fight fight a fleshly uh, appetite uh, by indulging it. We can't fight the devil with our flesh. We have to fight it in the spirit. And to do that, we must grow up, will ya? Grow up, will ya? We all need to do that. My next point is we need to, found in verse 23, we need to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. We need to think things that are right. You ever had an evil thought pop in your head when you're praying? A disgusting thought that popped in your head while you're praying? You can get rid of those, by the way, by saying, Lord, fill my heart and my mind with what you want me to think about. You know, I I had a wonderful dream this afternoon. I had a beautiful, beautiful dream this afternoon. We came to church tonight, and it was all packed out, and there's people in the hallway, and Freddie, Freddie said, Pastor, there's somebody sitting at my desk. I can't sit there, and man, I, Pastor, I got I to gotta be in the next room to, to do the audio. Well, amen. It's all good. That was a wonderful dream. I could have dreamed about cars, which is okay. I could have dreamed about baseball, which is okay, but I dreamed about the Lord. Why? I wanted my mind filled with God. It renewed it. In other words, it made it new again. Made it fresh again. You ever think, you know, whatsoever things are peaceable, and we, we talked about that, and pure, and all these things. And what does it say? Think on these things. In other words, put it in your mind. Are you a glass half full or a glass half empty kind of a person? See, if we grow up, we're a glass half full. We always look on the good things. Hey, we got some empty seats, but we got some people filling these. <laughs> I'd rather ha- I'd rather preach to a handful of empty seats than a room full of empty seats. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I- I- I'm excited by by the people that are here tonight. Verse twenty-two, we saw, talked about putting off, and in verse twenty-three, we talked about renewing, and then, uh, but but you know, God doesn't leave us hanging. Verse twenty-four, He says that ye put on. I want you to circle the words put on the ye put on. What are we supposed to put on? The new man. We're supposed to have the 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 righteousness and holiness of God, true holiness of God. We're supposed to put that on. There's nothing I love. I love a brand new dress shirt. The first time I remember when we went down to London at the Hudson's Bay Company. Um, we found a French cuff dress shirt. It was dirt cheap. It was like 24 bucks, dirt cheap. And I couldn't wait to put it on. There's nothing like brand spe- I, For me, it's a dress shirt. It might be, might be, or, or it might be whatever, brand new pair of shoes for you ladies. I don't know. I like, I like when you get the, the brand new pair of socks and you open them up and you take that little plastic tag out of it. And hopefully you take it all out. And you put on the new pair of socks. Amen? I like a new ball cap. My wife got me a B- Toronto Blue Jays ball cap, a red Blue Jays ball cap for, 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 um, for our anniversary. I liked when I first put it on, you, you kind of shaped it and formed it. and Man, man it looks, feels good. 
But when you put on God, it's new every day. See why? Because the Bible says his blessings are new every morning because he's faithful to us. We want to grow up. We have to put on the new man every day. It's a daily putting on. And not only that, my last point, verse 25, wherefore putting away lying, speaking evil, uh, speaking uh, every man the truth with his neighbor. We need to put away some things. I don't think we just stop with the lying and the speaking, but it also talks about putting away and being, uh, we, being angry when we sin. Verse 26, be angry, be angry and sin not. It also says, put away the placemat at the dinner table for the devil. Found in verse 27, neither give place to the devil. Verse 29, it talks about corrupt communication. We need to put that away. Verse 30 it talks about uh, uh, grieving, not grieving the Holy Spirit. We need to put that away. It talks about uh, verse 30, uh, 31, the bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor, and evil speaking be, again, put away from you with all malice. I challenge you to put a circle put away in verse 31. My dear friends, we have to put away some things. Maybe, I remember when I got saved, that there was, I got right with God. I had to put away some things. My rock music, I put them away. You know where I put them? The fireplace. Mm -hmm. My posters of, of um, uh, well, I won't tell you who I had posters of, I, 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 I put them away. My, my uh, uh, Sports Illustrated, didn't have, ever have the swimsuit issue, but my Sports Illustrated magazines, I put them away. I threw them in the garbage. I put them away. Why? Because I didn't want them anymore. Just like when Brother Currington went to that youth activity all-nighter, and as he was driving home, he saw his friends still probably stoned and drunk from the party, the New Year's Eve party. He said, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to be that way. Why? Because those types of friends are those that will not help me become like Jesus Christ. My dear friends, it is time that we grow up. My last point, we have to be ye. Circle the word, be ye, in verse 32. We have to be ye, be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. I like verse, verse 1 of chapter 5, be ye therefore followers of God. We've got to follow God. Be ye follower of God. You know what? God forgave you, didn't he? Remember, remember for Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Is there any unforgiveness in your heart? Well, Freddie didn't shake my hand tonight. I'm not going to forgive him ever. Freddie, you're mean. You didn't shake my hand. Until he shakes my hand, I'm not going to forgive him. Huh? Hey. <laughs> You hold grudges. It's time to grow up. You know, little children hold grudges. I remember when we were a kid, we used to play King of the Mountain. I don't know if you've ever played. Did you ever play that, Jim, King of the Mountain? I went to school in Bright Public School, and they used to shovel. Now, this is where we walk. Okay, when I went to public school, we walked uphill five uh, you know, five miles both ways. It's snow so high we touch, can touch telephone wires. Okay, amen. Um, uh, five miles both ways. Uh, by the way, we did not have bikes, and I did walk three kilometers to school every. Or we did not have buses. I walked three kilometers to school every day. Anyways, and that's not a lie. Uh, but anyways, well, maybe two and a half. 
maybe two, uh, maybe one and a half, I don't know. But I walked to school. And we used to play in the wintertime King of the Hill. And they used to shovel the snow, and on the edge of the uh, every edge of the uh, the blacktop, they used to pile the snow up. And you stood at the top of the at the top of the snow snow hill, and though you used to come up, and when they used, when people used to come up, you used to if you were the king of the hill, you used to push them down. And if somebody got up up with you, you used to you fought. And man, we had people getting. Legs broken, arms broken, fingers broken, nose broken, teeth missing, cuts on the eye. Uh, I remember Andrew, uh, Andrew Green. Andrew Green one time, uh, he came up and Bradley Steeles and, and uh, Robbie Blackburn, and uh, they were all up on the hill and they were all fighting. Andrew Green was the guy that was the king of the hill. And man, Andrew fought like there was no tomorrow. There, man, he was elbowing, and Andrew Green was the one that actually broke my nose when I was a kid. Um, good guy. Uh, loved him. He was a good, good, man, good young man. I don't know what he's doing now. Andrew, if you're listening, God bless you. Uh, but I uh, hope you're saved. Um, but, man, I'll tell you something. He fought tooth and nail, and, and you know what? He, 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 you know, and, and when, they, when, he, when you got everybody off, and by the way, he did get everybody off, he, goes, he started going, I'm the king of the castle, and you're the dirty rascal. And you know what? Uh, 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 that 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 infuriated other people. That and he did the swag. I'm the king of the castle. And he, you know, things you remember as a kid and you go back to like 40 or 30 years, 30 some years ago. Man, good night. But my dear friends, I'll tell you something. I don't think he'd do that today. At least I would hope not. At least I would hope not. You know, the the uh, it was ne- last year was the thirtieth anniversary of our gra- no two years ago was the thirtieth anniversary of our graduation. Oh, I'm old <laughs> of our public school graduation. Thirty years. We've grown up. Some have become teachers, and some have passed away, and some have I don't know what other people have gotten have done with their lives. Uh, John works in Ottawa. Robbie, last time I heard he was married, working on a cruise ship, him and his wife. We've grown up. But I'll tell you something. Those boys were tenderhearted toward it. We were all, we were, we were the gang. Me, Robbie Blackburn, John Scanlon, Bradley Steeles, Paul Hussey, we're the boys. We we're best buds. We treated each other with the greatest respect. I said, hey, if any of those four called me right now, I'd be there right after church. I'd go. I'd go help them out. Why? Because that's tenderheartedness. It's time to grow up, folks. Are you still? I, 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 I like that. Man, I love that tweet that Brother Wilkerson sent, what was it again? Um, and by the way, the Lord used that as a, as, a, as, a, as a change to my message. We cannot live on skim milk during the week and preach cream on Sunday. But you know what? We can't expect as we're saved for 10, 20, 30 years. How long have you been saved, Mrs. Payne? 17 years. Freddie, how long have you been saved? 16 years. Sarah, how long have you been saved? 16. Jim, you're about five, six years. I'm in 29. Maybe it's time we all grow up. Mm-hmm. Be 29 this year in November, I'll be saved. Maybe it's time we all grow up. I don't know why the Lord had me preach this message. I don't know why the Lord had me preach this morning's message, albeit I, I, I kind of I got this morning's message afterwards. I, why? But what are you struggling with? What's the, the little sin that so easily beset us? What are you struggling with? Because people are watching you. And for my family, I'm sorry that I struggle with some things, and you guys know what they are. We all str- I think we all struggle with some things. I'm sorry, my family. And I, I'm, I'm going to pull up my bootstraps in time to grow up. 
What do you struggle with? Freddie, you got three girls that are watching you. Your daughters watch you like a hawk. Your wife watches you like a hawk. What do you struggle with? Elsie, you got girls, you got coworkers that watch you like a hawk. What do you struggle with? Jim, you got, you got people, unsaved people that, uh, that want to be around you. They watch you like a hawk. What are you struggling with? Sarah, what are you struggling with? Your coworkers watch you. Jim, your coworker, or Freddie, your coworkers. Abigail, your coworkers. What do we struggle with? What are the little things, the childish things that we need to put away that we may grow up? and point others to God. Those that are follow our sinful habits will hurt those who follow us. It is time that we grow up.